Hey, Student Success, this is your lecture video for Chapter 9. So Chapter 9 talks about just different types of like diversity and social world of college. So we're just going to use the pages to kind of guide our discussion. So as you'll see throughout here, it's going to talk about the first chunk is going to focus on like social interactions um, because depending on where you are in your collegiate path and your past experiences leading up to this point, this may or may not be the first time that you're exposed to a lot of different like diversity and, and groups of students and opportunities to engage with diverse cultures. So that's what this chapter really hinges on. And so it does talk about the importance of social interaction. Um, if you do struggle with making new friends, it just kind of depends on your personality. It does go through and give some tips on how to navigate those kind of situations and communication skills, which I think is important regardless of your like relationship status and how you communicate with people like the communication skills is important no matter the context. And so this is kind of reiterates some of the things we talked about in previous chapters, you know, making sure that you're paying attention to verbal and nonverbal communication that, and here are some other really important tips that you're trying to be more of an active listener. You ask questions, you look for that emotional intelligence piece where you look at body language, you look at facial expressions, um, you making sure that you are giving eye contact, allowing the person to know that you are present in the moment. And there's also ways to make sure that you are being effective in your speaking, you know, being honest, trying to avoid sarcasm, unless you know the person well, um, you know, trying not to imitate that person. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of different tips on that communication piece. And again, I think that's relevant regardless of the context and regardless where you are um, socially or at college or anything like that. There is a piece about social networking and how it can be helpful, but you also need to make sure that you're using it in a way that is appropriate, you know, given the fact that I feel like new social media sites are popping up quite frequently, just making sure that you are using those in a way that are um, professional, because you want to make sure that when you go to apply for a job, if they search for you, and they do, I've sat on multiple hiring committees here at the college, even where we do look up individuals online to see what their online presence is. And so that includes any kind of like, you know, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, anything like that. So sometimes it's recommended that, you know, you have a LinkedIn page, so it's a little bit more professional. Sometimes we have people, especially in the field of education. So if you're going into the teaching field, having a personal like Facebook or um, even a, a personal TikTok and then a professional one. I know that sounds silly, but so that you do have that professional presence as well. So just something to think about. And this gives some other tips and ways to navigate that situation. Um, there is some information in here balancing school life and social life. You know, we want to make sure that you're not all school, 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 or all social, social, social while you're in college. You want to find a good balance between the two. So this kind of gives some reminders as to where you can find tips on specific areas and how to do that. A lot of, I mean, we've already talked about all of these in previous chapters, you know, making sure that you are really focusing on your time management and your study skills. So putting those things as priorities, learning how to you know, make sure that you are dedicating time to your studies, but also giving yourself that much needed time with family and friends or just yourself to make sure that you're not burning out. So these are all tips on how to make sure that you are finding that good balance. Now, we do not have Greek life here on campus in terms of like fraternity sororities. We do have um, honors programs here that have the Greek letters. So just that's a little bit different, though. There is a section on like resolving conflict, conflict resolution. If you are someone who avoids conflict or does not know how to deal with conflict, there is a whole section that talks about resolving conflict and making sure that you are doing so in a way that is respectful and kind of has boundaries for yourself and the other person. So uh, a lot of these, and I actually try to use this quite a lot with my own children, to be honest, like using I statements so that I am trying to understand, you know, this is how I feel when they behave. And I think that's applicable to so many different situations, you know, making sure that you are talking about how you feel and how you are responding versus what the other person is doing. I, I've used that now for years with my kids. Um, so it, it applies to many different situations. Now here's a section on roommate issues, which I think is interesting. Not all of us are going to have roommates, especially at this, depending on where you are in your life, but some of this can apply 
if you substitute the word roommate for parents, for siblings, for children, for spouse, whatever it might be, the room situation, the living situation you have. So I think these can actually be helpful regardless of the situation. You know, be patient, flexible, and willing to compromise, anticipate problems before they happen, you know, deal with anything promptly. Like some of these are actually really good advice for any kind of relationship you might have, especially if you're living with someone, these kind of things can really help. So it does go into more detail about, you know, roommates specifically, or if there's issues that go beyond just basic problems, you know, like harassment type issues. The rest of this section talks about like family situations, family relationships. Sometimes when you go to school, especially when you're younger, some relationships might take a little bit of like growing pains, if you will, because you are spending a lot more time in your studies or you're connecting with other classmates. And so you might see that certain family or friend relationships might change or feel a little distant. So there's some tips on how to make sure that that is not going to impact you negatively. The next section talks about living with diversity because as I mentioned, this is a time where most people, um, especially younger, more traditional students who are coming right out of high school, are exposed to a lot of different diversity. And diversity means you can see this whole list here. Diversity is not just what we can see on the outside. Oftentimes we think of that right away, race, ethnicity, culture, that kind of thing. Sometimes we can see those things. We can't always even see those things, to be honest. But then there's also things that we cannot see. So for instance, your educational background, um, your age is not always apparent, your socioeconomic background, sexual orientation, religion, all of these things, sometimes you cannot see on the outside as well. So we are all diverse in all these different ways. And so we are exposed to these in um, in college, especially for the first time for many of us. And so there's a lot of benefits to that. You know, I always think that it's helpful whenever you can see things from different perspectives and someone who has not been brought up in the same, you know, neighborhood or even the same like town has a lot of different perspectives than we do. And so the more diversity and ideas and backgrounds and things like that is actually a better way to learn because you are considering other viewpoints. You're allowing yourself to kind of be a little bit more open-minded to other ways of thinking or considerations that you might not have taken into consideration before. So you want to make sure that you're just kind of being aware of that and taking advantage of that. Um, I like Stark State because we actually have a very diverse range of ages, which allows all of our age ranges to benefit from one another because we have students who, are, who have a lot of experience and in the field already, they're coming back to, to gain more or they're to changing field. And we have some students who are coming right from high school who have a lot more knowledge in other areas. So it's really interesting to see that kind of interaction. So this all talks about like, and here's what I was just alluding to, like traditional versus non-traditional. Non-traditional students are those who maybe have taken a few years off. Um, the average age of a Star State College student I think is around 25, 26 now. So we have a good deal of non-traditional students here. So that can be very beneficial for lots of different purposes. And so this section all talks about kind of taking advantage of that and really thinking about how you are coming to the college, what diversity and what uh, backgrounds do you bring and how can that be beneficial to the people around you with your own perspectives, as well as just really checking in with your own kind of biases or stereotypes that you might have about different people of different backgrounds as well. There's a little bit of activities in here. These are not graded or anything. They're just things to think through if you're interested in doing that and making sure that you are kind of respecting diversity and really thinking about how that plays a role in your learning, as well as making sure that we are recognizing and even putting a stop to if we see instances of prejudice. And so this goes through what to do when that happens and how to handle those type of situations. All right. And then the next one talks more about that social piece is getting involved on campus. Um, Vincent Tinto, based out of Syracuse up in New York, does a lot of research on this particularly as it relates to community college students, because especially with our campus because we are not a dormitory type campus. We are a parking lot, classroom, parking lot type campus, or you're an online student only. And so sometimes that can lead to students not feeling very connected to their campus. And so student groups are actually a great way to help feel more connected. And his research shows that even though we're busy, we're going to school, we're working, we have families, that joining even one club builds a connection and actually can lead to higher GPAs, better retainment and more likelihood of graduating. So there are actually 
like academic benefits to joining organizations. Not only that, obviously, like if you join an organization that's connected to your field, it's going to look great on your resume. It's going to have some networking opportunities. And so there's lots of benefits to doing those um, organizations. And I know that sometimes you're like, oh, how do I ever have time? A lot of the events that some of these groups have involve families. And so I just wanted to point out, you know, under the Stark State's info for current students, student clubs, there's a whole list, and I've probably brought this up before, but there is a whole list of organizations here on campus. You can see a lot of these are connected to fields like medical laboratory attacks. Um, you have your human social services, but you also have ones for fun. So there's like a comic book club, a book club, you know, so there are things and you can, if you click on, you can see the little description, you can see who the um, advisors are, you can contact them. So great way to get involved again, connected to your uh, peers on campus, but also build your resume, make networking opportunities. Um, so lots of different ways. Also speaking of like different backgrounds, we do have like the interfaith campus ministry. So different diverse backgrounds and beliefs. Um, I do want to point those things out. And we have a um, focus on African American males in education. So lots of different organizations, even outside of just the student clubs that do focus on student diversity. So we have some information here about you know, English as a second language. We have information that can help there. So we do have more places on campus that can help with that. So I'd like to point out those. All right, so that is chapter nine altogether. Uh, as always, I encourage you to take a look on your own, really spend some time in this section. Do you feel like you need to pay most attention to? And then be sure to check back for your assignments connected to this chapter.